What's going on everyone? Today we're here with Dr. Jerry Bobo. Now he is a doctor of psychology and we have a lot of questions for him. Now, Dr. Jerry, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Now, this is great to have a psychologist on the show because we really need to understand the psychology of a lot of things going on within the black community, things around us that we're dealing with constantly. So just to get started, um, what made you interested in getting into psychology? Man, really almost was just a, a, a natural path for me uh, <clears throat> in school. I mean, even in, in, in junior high, high school, I just had an affinity for people and behavior and uh, those psych one-on-one -on -one classes and all that stuff, man, stuck to me like glue. And uh, I'm probably one of the privileged few uh, that recognized their calling uh, and career path that early. And uh, just been doing it ever since, man. And, you know, love continuing education. I'm a certified substance abuse uh, counselor, uh, anger management, relationship specialist. So I try to be all things to all people. All right. So we're going to talk about one of the biggest topics that we discuss uh, on this platform is definitely racism and, and white supremacy. Now, the question I have is psychologically, what are the effects of racism upon an African-American person? Because obviously it has effects. <laughs> I mean, th that's not even the word for it. I mean, I, I truly believe uh, that every African-American ought to be able to get a disability check. In, in addition to the reparations that we're owed, every African-American suffers from PTSD. There's no way around it. Now, for people who don't know what PTSD is, can you kind of explain that? Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, think about this. Every single day, every single way, an African-American has to go through, right here in America, right, has to go through their life with a, with a dual consciousness, right, or a double consciousness, meaning if you walk into a room, you're aware that you're in that room, right? That, that's, that's your cognizance, right? You're aware that you're there. But as an African-American, you not only have to be aware that you're in the room, but you also have to be aware that you're in the room as an African-American. So that's a dual consciousness. That's a stressor. See, the things that people take for granted that are not African-Americans, so you hear people all the time that are not African-Americans say, hey, let the racism thing go. Let the racism thing go. That's old. Let's move on. It's 2018. We're in the 21st century. That's a person that has a single consciousness, right? They will never be able to relate to being pulled over and your heart just pounding simply because you don't know what you did. A, a traffic stop is traumatic. A police officer simply walking up to you to ask you how your day is going can be traumatic because you don't know if he's about to ask you about your day or end your day. See, other races walk into the bank, hip, hip, hooray, happy, happy, joy, joy, because they know they're going to come out with the loan. They know they're going to come out with the, the, the home approved. African-Americans, not so much. And this is not my opinion. It's a statistical fact that we are suffering and continue to suffer to this day. If this was any other race of people, right? Indians have received reparations. It, Jews have received reparations, have been acknowledged across the board what has happened to them in all these atrocities. Yet the African-American is still being dismissed, still being blown off. I don't understand it, sir. So due to that PTSD, um, it definitely affects every area of our lives. So you talk about relationships. Now, why is it that we notice that the black man and black woman have a hard time getting along uh, more than any other group? But this is what I noticed. If that same African-American woman or man uh, be with other races, they don't have those problems sometimes. So why is that? I, I believe, right, and so, and, and I know we're not going to be on here long, so I, I don't want anybody to take bits and pieces of what I say and, and chop it up. Now, I know, you know, our history, our heritage does not begin with slavery, right? So right. I don't, and, and, and so I have to ease into this. Our history does not begin with that. However, 
it has been beat into us so long, right, that people believe that's where it is. So because of that, think about this. Our belief system is generated by our family of origin. Your belief system will always dictate your operating principles. So when you come from a family of dysfunction, when you come from a family of distrust, when you come from a family full of toxic secrets, uh, all the negativity that you hear uh, as an African-American child, right? And we know the stigma, right? You just like your daddy. You ain't never going to be nothing. I hate you was born. Uh, what go on in this house? Stay in this house. Money don't grow on trees. Sit yourself down somewhere. All men are dogs, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, when this is heard over and over again, it becomes ingrained in your belief system. And if you believe those things to be true, you're going to operate accordingly. So the black woman, for all practical purposes, has no respect for the black male. And the black male, in turn, has earned the disrespect, has earned the distrust because he has believed those negative messages and has literally, for the most part, stopped trying. Now, I'm not talking about the exceptions to the rule. I'm talking about the rule. Right, because, you know, we as African-Americans aren't discussing our relationship issues. And when you bring up relationship issues that we're having, no one wants to take responsibility for each side having a hand in it. We, we attack each other when we bring up, you know, let's say commitment, right? And, and, and we notice, you know, just, you know, we two men, we yes, notice that, you know, some of our brothers don't want to get in families at all. Right. They don't want to commit to anything. They want to just, you know, fool with women, move around. And, and, and that's, that's something I'm seeing across the board. Now, why, what is that issue there? Like, why is it that you, we see some brothers just don't want to commit? You, you know, it, it, it's a myriad of things that go into that, right? So let's let's trace it back again to its roots, to, to the belief system, to the operating system, right? So when you say they moving around, they don't want to commit, they here, they there, they everywhere, that's them operating, right? That's their modus operandi. That's how they're moving. Well, we got to take it a step further. Why are they moving that way? What's the belief system? For the most part, it's what? They don't trust the black woman. They believe that the black woman uh, has, has somehow surpassed them, superseded them. And, got, and, and remember, we can't talk about one problem without talking about the other. They literally go together like a hand in the glove. So what's, mm -hmm. what's the woman's movement, right? Uh, bills, bills, bills. Can you pay my bills? No, no romance without finance. finance. Uh, Got to have a J-O-B if you want to get with me, right? Where's the mm -hmm. love in any of that, right? And so the man, you know, trying to be hardcore, right? Uh, macho, ego, he'll tell you he don't need love. That's impossible. Every human being desires security. Every human being desires love and nurturing. But the black male has said, you know what? Instead of being hurt, instead of being let down, and, and, instead of being uh, looking like a jackass, I'm going to be a plate. I'm going to be a Mac. I'm going to be a pimp. And I'm going to fool myself and fool others into believing I don't need one woman. I need a lot of women. I'm a, I'm, I'm a complex guy. Uh, one, one woman won't do it for me. Now, one woman would do it for him, right? One woman would do it, but he's afraid to go through the muck and the mire to get to that one woman. Well, where does the fear come from? Experience. If you look at the men, let's look at their father. Let's look at their grandfathers. I know very few black men, and I travel the world especially the United States, I know very few black men that come from stable homes that had a good positive role model male figure in the home. See, don't tell me about your uncle did a good job. I don't, don't want to hear about the cousin that did a good job. I don't want to hear about your pastor that took you under your wing. That's awesome. Where was the father? See, if how can you mirror a behavior that you never saw? If Papa was a Rolling Stone, what will you be? Right, because that 
you know, stereotype. Not just I do say it's a stereotype because you've been around, I've been around. Of course, you got some star guys not doing what they're supposed to do, but you also have good black men out here mm -hmm. who's taking care of their children, taking care of their families. Of course, they they treat that like it is an anomaly, but <laughs> right. you know, the, C, the CDC um, stated that we are in our children's lives more than any other group. Mm -hmm. and, and and unfortunately, we have white supremacy to deal with with propaganda. And yes, some examples, as you described, but all, just like we have the men doing it, we also have women doing it. You know, you have women that get with man after man, having baby after baby after baby. Absolutely. And if the man haven't had a father around, do you think that the women who's having child after child after child, is it linked to the father or the mother has something to do with it? How How is it on the female end? Man, you know, listen, so let's go back to their belief system, their operating principles. Nine times out of 10, they saw their mother, they saw their grandmother, they saw their aunt almost playing Legos, so to speak. Here's what I mean. They were trying to piece together a perfect man, right? It was as wrong as two left shoes, but this is what typically happens. Well, I'm going to deal with Johnny because Johnny make me laugh. But I'm going to deal with Ricky because Ricky can help me with a few bills. Now, I'm going to deal with Mike because I like Mike's sex. And then I'm going to deal with James because I can just talk to James. So they taking all these bits and pieces of men trying to form one man, if that makes sense. Almost like the old cartoon Voltron. The five lions had to come together to make this one robot. And that's typically what the woman has been doing historically is trying to pit, piece, mix, and match all these different types of men to come up with that one man. When you don't know who you are, when you don't know your original language, when you don't know uh, why you believe what you believe, when you toss to and fro with the wind, I mean, what do we expect? If you talk to the average woman today and you take money out of it, you take children out of it, you take a man out of the situation and just ask her, what makes her happy? What would make her happy that has nothing to do with nobody else? The average woman can't tell you because she's literally caught up in an identity crisis, right? She's been trying to be a mother. She's been trying to be a wife. She's been trying to be a daughter. She's been trying to be a Sora. She's been trying to be an auntie. She's trying to go to school. She's trying to stay out the street. She's trying to be in the street. See, all these things come crashing down on her, and she's literally walking around in an identity crisis and don't even know. It. So on top of having that identity crisis, we also, you know, hear, you know, some, some, not all, some sisters may say, well, they, they don't want to settle, you know, with any old guy. And, um, so it puts a, a pressure, let's say on the black man, uh, more so in the area of finance. Right. When, when they say that, but it seems like, and I saw one sister talk about this, that sometimes unrealistic expectations mm. that they're having and they're literally leaving them single. So where does that come from? Because from, from just from my experiences, maybe you could tell me, I haven't heard no one use the term, I'm not selling, I'm not selling, I'm not selling, like our sisters use that term. Right, right. I've, I've not heard that either. I've not heard, I, I concur with you. My, my, my beautiful black sisters are the only... Uh, race of women that I am privy to that use that term. And again, I, and I hate to use this term, but I don't know another term to use. Brainwashing. Brainwashing, right? When, 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 the, when the woman, the black woman is constantly bombarded with news of deadbeat this, deadbeat that, killing, gang banging, uh, don't want nothing, lackadaisical, melancholy, okay? Even though she may not have personally experienced that she's heard it so much it literally has sank into her psyche and she believes that because the average woman hadn't even had experiences like that but they'll walk around as if they had i ain't settling i ain't settling well my sister i don't think anybody's asking you to settle i'm asking you have you tried i'm asking you have you given someone an opportunity or have you just simply prejudged them based upon false evidence appearing real it's evidence but it's false and it just appears real right so the unrealistic expectations are keeping a lot of them single and they want husbands they, they want to get married they want family structure 
but then you you in turn you know you have some of our brothers who are out there that are not trying and, and it's because you know you have especially with someone's like in their 30s right and you still ain't got yourself together like 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 come on so so you know i know this society beats black men up you know that just as well as you know i do right so right. what can these black men do who who are kind of down who feel like they can't do anything because you know you see the black woman scaling past you and that's that's by design literally in this country oh absolutely. what could that black man do Man, you know, that, that that's probably the billion dollar question, right? That's the billion dollar question. And, and, and I hate to sound um, cliche-ish, but we got to start at grassroots, right? Uh, my, my father always told me, it ain't hating if it's true, right? It ain't hating if it's true. So mm -hmm. black men, we love to look at the telescope, right? We want to look at the stars. We love to look at the microscope. We, we, we want to see things on a cellular level. We even want to use some binoculars and just look across the field. But when will we look into the mirror? I think, I think that's where the black man has to start, where we literally just look into the mirror, like forget what everybody else is saying, forget what everybody else is thinking, but let's look in the mirror and have some accountability, some personal responsibility. Start there, not to impress anyone, because it ain't got nothing to do with that. But when I look in the mirror, am I a good man? And what does that really mean? Is my credit in order? Are my finances in order? Uh, do, do I have a skill? Do I have a trade? Uh, am I interested in higher education? Um, what am I doing? Do I have any investments? Do I know what investments are? And if there's a no or a negative by any of that, it doesn't mean the man is negative. But it does mean he needs to address those negative areas. So once he becomes the best man that he can be, I believe the universe will deliver to him at that point what he needs. Now, not to be uh, all theological and scriptural, but if we look in the beginning, right, Adam and Eve, and if we, and if we believe the story as it's written, Adam did not receive Eve until after Adam had done what he needed to do. It wasn't until Adam had tended the garden. It wasn't until Adam had named the animals. Then God at that point said, it's not good for Adam to be alone. Then the woman came into his life. And I believe a lot of times women will also rush a man, right? Because they feel like they biological clock ticking. Uh, they, they, uh, everybody getting married around them. And they'll go grab a man who was not meant for them. That man was still in the microwave. He was still in the oven baking. He wasn't fully done, right? You done pulled him out early, and now you're wondering why your relationship is in turmoil. You're wondering why it's ending in divorce. You're wondering why you're fussing and fighting. And again, I believe there's a duality there. I believe that the first duality is that the man has not, in most cases, done what he needs to do to get himself together, then connect with the woman. And in some cases, the woman is so desperate to be in a relationship, she know the man not fully cooked. She know he half baked, for lack of a better term. But she'll go get him and marry him anyway. So on top of the relationship issues that we're discussing, um, we also have people who feel that, well, um, I can't get along with a sister. I can't get along with a brother. Then we try to go date, you know, people in the, um, dominant society. I'm say some people like to do that. Right. And I feel that particular relationship causes more problems than any other personally, just from what I've seen culturally, um, and, and in relation to our problems, especially when you start having children, etc. We have women that have wrote books to tell a black woman how to act when they're trying to get with a Caucasian male, but they won't write a book to tell you how to get with your brother. Right. Now, you know, we have brothers that's hurt, get online, trash sisters all day. Right. And they say this woman is better. So obviously we have an issue there too. So how can we fix that issue? So people, you know, our brothers and sisters can return back to each other to build, you know, wonderful families. You know, I used to hear hear people say 50-50 uh, love, 
50 50 right and mm-hmm. i i think that that is just foundationally wrong it, it's not 50 50 it's 100 100 the fairy tale of love says i'm gonna meet somebody and they gonna complete me i'm gonna meet my dream woman she gonna complete me i'm gonna meet my dream man he gonna complete me i think that is where we are foundationally wrong until i'm together 100 percent until my sister gets together 100 percent we'll never have a healthy whole relationship right it, it, it's out because you're going to be looking uh for for this need to fulfill your needs so why why does the sister go and say well i want to be with the other race i want to be with the other man instead of the brother man because she's saying he she believes he can fulfill her in a way that the black man can't right so it's almost like a person saying i love fish you love fish mm-hmm, i love fish then why are you eating the fish well because i love it well you love it so much that you took it out the water killed it flowered it fried it. that's that's how much you love it now you didn't love fish you love you right you loved yourself and you had an appetite for the fish the fish simply what quenched your hunger it had nothing to do with the love of the fish it was the love of yourself and we do that in relationship oh i love him do you really love him or do you love what he do for you do you love the the the, the pieces that he feels in because really it's a self love it's not the love of the other person so i just believe if we could just become healthy and whole if we could become uh, 100% in our faith, in our family, in our finances, in our fitness, as well as our focus, then we'll attract to ourselves another healthy whole person, not you completing me, not I complete you, but no, we're already complete. We just come together and be greater. But until we can satisfy those innate internal needs without having to sacrifice somebody else again think about a person that say they love fish now you don't love fish you love to eat fish and those are two different things my brother right and then also let's talk about the black men and most people don't Mm -hmm. express this you you may say well deadbeat dads is an issue and and let's say you have you know this you have a little boy and a little girl Mm -hmm. but let's say the mom gets upset okay and this little boy look just like the dad. He has the same mannerisms. He sound like him. He move like him. And then all his life, she's mad that he's not around. And then every five minutes, you look just like your old daddy. You just about your daddy. And there's always something negative. And then we, we don't talk about the black boys that grew up dealing with that stigma and being hurt by their mothers. And then they grow up you know, to men. And then they just have this, like this hate and disdain for, for sisters that had nothing to do with it, of course. Right. But why isn't the black community, we aren't talking about the mothers who are just trashing these black boys. Well, uh, you, we don't do that because we, we, we trying to remain socially acceptable. We don't want to be bashed. We don't want to be shunned. We don't want to be unfriended. We don't want to appear to not be cool. See, that's the problem. Nobody wants to deal with truth. Everybody wants to deal with tolerance. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to deal with truth. We want to deal with tolerance. They don't want to experience the back, excuse me, the backlash of saying that. But I'm glad you said it because it's real. Think about it. The messages you receive from your mom will stay with you a lifetime. The messages you receive from your father will stay with you a lifetime. See, what is your identity? People think your identity is your name. Your your identity is not your name. That's just a label. You would still be the same husband. You would still be the same father. You would still be the same uh, uh, CEO that you are if I didn't know your name. The name has nothing to do with it. Your identity is made up of three things, right? How you think others see you. How you see yourself in comparison to others. And then finally, how you see yourself. So in that example that you said, If I keep hearing, I'm just like my no good daddy, I talk just like my no good daddy, I walk just like my no good daddy, I'm going to be in hell or jail uh, just like my no good daddy. Hmm, 
well, how do I think mama see me? <laughs> how do I see me in comparison to other little boys? Finally, how am I going to see me when I look in the mirror? Well, that stuff will sink in my spirit, become a part of my identity. I grow up and literally become a self-fulfilling prophecy, period. Yeah, and you know, a lot of times that that everything you said just was usually not expressed. We always talk about the deadbeat dad, and, and even the media. That's all they want to harp on, but but it don't matter. You know, mom, you know, can't do no wrong, and and right. a lot of boys grow up dealing with that issue. And it's not like that mom purposely trying to do that. Sometimes it just comes out that way because because you're right. just pissed right. off, you know, with the situation, but. They don't understand that even if you are talking bad about the dad, and I'm a, totally against that. If the dad's a piece of crap, let the kids find out on their own. Don't sit there right. all day and say, you're sorry, no good, daddy, you did see that, and the third, and that happens too. And then, you know, the kids grow up, it, it, it hurts them. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think we all know the age-old adage, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. Hurt people hurt people. So when that mom is wounded and disgusted and scarred and, 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 and tormented, she gonna, that's going to ooze out. That's going to ooze out. That, that's going to spill out onto everyone. And who do we hurt first? Those closest to us. So in order for us to, we talk about on our channel a lot about trying to, you know, unify and fix our problems. Oh, what is the greatest hindrance to us unifying that you see um, based on the, the issues that we have, like PTSD and, you know, relational issues, what's the biggest stumbling block? Why can't we do it like they did it back in the 60s? I think the biggest stumbling block is the negative connotation associated with getting mental health. Mental health is, is you crazy, you retarded, is something wrong with you. That, that's not it, right? To, to, to seek help, to seek coaching, to seek therapy, to seek counseling is not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of strength. And you don't have to seek those things because you're doing bad, right? You don't have to be doing bad to do good. Maybe you're okay. You just want to be better. And maybe you want your better to eventually be your best. So until us as, as a race of people stop the negative, toxic secrets, right? Because how long that's been going on in our lives? What's going on in my house, stay in my house. I mean, you would get the wrath of God if you was to say something about your mm. parents arguing or finances or, or something that went wrong. Oh, my God, they would beat you from here to kingdom come because my business is my business. But it's the secrets that kill us. It's the secrets that kill us. We all know that as an individual, we will not make it. It's back to kindergarten. Divided we stay. I mean, I'm sorry, divided we fall, together we stand. So that's what we got to come to. We got to stop judging each other. We got to stop hating on each other. We got to stop criticizing each other and come together. Let's get rid of the me mentality and come up with a we mentality. Right, because in this day and time that, that we have, we need to, you know, get together because, you know, now that's, I want to kind of shift this to the, psychology of a white supremacist because if you think about them they it is not even normal how they think and the obsession they have toward us as black people now psychologically what's wrong with them because it's hard to even pin them <laughs> man listen when you what what type of mindset would you have to have i mean just think about that for one second uh i personally I, I don't care for cats, right? I, I, a cat is just a weird animal to me. I'm, I'm, I'm almost afraid of a cat, right? But I would never kick one. I would never set one on fire. I would never intentionally harm a cat, even though I don't care for the cat, right? But it, it's an animal, and I wouldn't do that. What mentality do you have to have to hurt, harm, mangle, murder, neglect, rape, rob, and pillage a human being, sir. Can you imagine how far off your psyche you gotta be? I couldn't do it to a cat, but they can do it to a person. 
So some things would probably drive you insane trying to make a sane notion out of it. It's just insanity. You'll never, I don't believe anybody will ever put their finger on what type of psychology, what type of paradigm a person has to have to be able to do and commit those atrocious crimes against another person. I I, I, I don't have an answer for it. I, I can't speak intelligently on it. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I, it has to, it has to be some, some diagnosis somewhere that we could point to because, like I said, it's, it's just not normal. I, and the thing is, I haven't seen, you know, other groups of people in mass, you know, participate in that kind of behavior. Because right now, we, 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 as we're talking, those same group of people will be here watching this whole thing mad, and they'll watch every video that we're talking about on on this, you know, channel. Right. Um. But yet they hate us, and, and, and like I say, it, it's it's. But the, this the thing, we we'll, we'll say okay, we get it. We know you hate us. Let let's let's go it on and let's get you know schools for our children. Let's kind of start doing things for ourselves. But the same group don't want us away from them. Mm. See that part too. I don't understand that. So that's why I'm questioning you. If, because if you, if you now had, listen, now, they, they don't want you now. That, now that's just kind of nature right there. Well, no, I, I don't want you away from me because you serve me a purpose. You are smarter. You are faster. You are stronger. You do have over a trillion dollars of, of, of monies that you spend yearly. So now I'm, 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 I'm evil, almost insane, but I ain't crazy, right? So now I need, I need you because you serve a purpose. So we serve a purpose, but yet you murder us. Absolutely. There goes and, the, and there goes the insanity. There goes the insanity right there. Exactly. We just saw, you know, Alton Sterling, the cops got off once again, right? And, and and it's like they they can kill without blinking an eye. Right. Literally. And they can kill and go home to their children, um, you know, eat eat a a, a swine sandwich or whatever else they they going to do. Right. And yet that same group of people don't want us away from them. And, and it's just, it, it, it blows my mind. And, and, and if you really, and if you really want to make them mad, when I, let's say you post a video, mm -hmm. just, just tell black people, Hey, let, let, until they get, they act together, just to stop dating them and stop marrying them. Mm -hmm. They go even more insane mm -hmm. about it. You used to see how they come on my timeline when I said, you know, things like that in the past because I'm trying to protect us. Okay? Right, we, right. Like you said, we got PTSD enough on our own. We can't deal with insanity and our PTSD at the same time because enough we we have this white validation problem. Let's talk about that. Many black people want to be validated by white people and seek white people for everything a lot of times or they can't move. What's up with that? I mean, think about this. When we were younger, I'm 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 tell my age. I'm 41, right? Mm -hmm. And I grew up in the Baptist church. Uh, we were later on dragged to a uh, Kojic church, and uh, later on non-denominational, and uh, eventually apostolic. Out of all of that, I still grew up seeing white, blue-eyed, wavy-haired Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, what 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 message ha have I been receiving? White is right. God white. God white. God white. God ain't black. God not a Negro. God don't have kinky hair like me. God don't have a dog. But no, God is white, and he got blue eyes, and he got wavy hair. Man, if if God white then I'm going to put a God syndrome or God complex, a God admiration on anything else. White. The white man ice got to be cold. The white man answer got to be right. Even though it's wrong, it's right. And he definitely know more than you. Ain't nowhere in the world you know more. You or me with a PhD in some people black, uh, black mind. A homeless white guy no more than me. A homeless yeah. white guy no more than me with a PhD. And again, I don't really think it's their fault. 
when this has been ingrained in you since birth, that God is white? I mean, what can you do but admire and adore white people, sir? Yeah, and and, and the, like you said earlier, you may have your PhD, but a homeless white guy can speak more, you know, say the same thing that you just said, or even less than what you said, and they're like, oh my God, he, I, he's just the greatest thing ever. That's why I say one day, I say, you know what, maybe I should get a white guy to sit here and just feed him what to say. Yeah. And, 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 and like I said, my viewers should probably triple uh, uh, in a month because a white guy is saying it. And, and, and you know, I have some black people they say, oh, Phil, this white person said this. And I'm like, I say that 24-7. But they like act like, oh, my God, Phil, you should see it because a white guy is saying it. Like, and look, and oh. then they'll say something like, but, man, it's, I know you say it, but he said it looked different, man. He had a different little spin on it, man. See, he, he said to such and such, you ain't say it like that. And you know that there, I, I know you know, but, you know, there are some black people that have that have black businesses, right? Mm -hmm. But you will never know it's a black business because they put a white face on it. They put a white representation on it and they sales actually increase. Man, that's sad. They put, they, sad. They, they attach, they attach some whiteness to it. Now, all of a sudden it's better. It's bigger. Sad. Yeah. And, and like, unfortunately, like I said, you know, black people perpetuate that, you know, more than anything. And and that's that's extremely sad. And like like I said, slowly people waking up to uh, you know against that false idol of white Jesus. You know, slowly you know people waking up, and I, and I'm glad about that. And then you can right. back it up with scripture that showed that Jesus wasn't white. But you know, it's like pulling teeth. You know, to get to get some of, some of us to to get out of that that mindset about white Jesus. I, I but we we getting there. Woo. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we slowly 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 getting there. Um, but then when you all, uh, you know, awaken, right. Mm -hmm. And let's say you all listen to people like, um, minister Farrakhan, for instance, you know, they okay. need him all uh, right. with a passion. Okay. When your eyes are open and you speak in the truth, uh -huh. the very first thing they do as a defense mechanism is say, you hate white people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man, I have to say that all the time, brother. I, I literally have to go on my Facebook page and say, listen, just because I'm pro black don't mean I'm anti something else. Mm -hmm. I can love my own without hating something else. And that 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 is that's atrocious to me. That that they, they always try to uh polarize it like that, right? Oh, oh if you for your own, then by sure osmosis you gotta be against somebody else. And that's not a true statement. Right. I mean, but my thing is based on everything you said earlier in this in this uh, interview about we have PTSD, we have relationship problems. We 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 have to try to figure all that stuff out. We're trying to unify. We're trying to you know have families. We're trying to figure out why we have self hate issues. All things we got to figure out. We need to take that time and love ourselves and fix our problems. We ain't got time for me. Hate is a waste of time because I need to take that emotion. And put that into the love of, of my personal family and my community. Because that's an energy. That's an energy, right? It, hate is an energy, right? It's, 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 it's no different than fire. The same fire that'll cook your food is the same fire that'll burn your house down, right? Fire mm -hmm. is fire. So emotion, energy in motion, that hate, I, I concur with you 100%. The hate, the depression, the confusion, the discombobulation should be channeled, man, and laser focused on us getting our stuff together. But, man, it's almost virtually impossible when you start to look at this. Some of our people, man, uh, have what I call uh, Stockholm Syndrome, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and in its nutshell, that's just when uh, you've been taken hostage, you've been held captive. And you start developing feelings for, for the hostage taker. You start to develop an emotional bond and attachment to the person that's holding you against your will. And that is a real syndrome, sir. Stockholm syndrome is real. And I believe a majority of black people suffer from that as well. We have fallen in love with the hostage taker, my brother. Yes, we do love, we love them so much so that, you know, I, when I say I am not 
going to be the old school way because it doesn't work. Right. Um, I'm not going to be on this forgiveness and turn the other cheek. I'm not. And I have black folks come against me, but brother, we got to forgive. Well, first of all, when that police kill your son, he don't even ask you for forgiveness, but you on automatic. I got to forgive them. Right. But, but when something happened to them, they don't go run and forgive uh, anybody that do something to them. Matter of fact, they want revenge immediately won't revenge when something happened to them. So, so why is it that black people, we automatically forgive and it's so polarizing when I say, I am not forgiving them. I'm not turning the other chief to get that. The only thing they respect is an eye for an eye. And then you have black folks. And of course, some of them, well, why would you say that? Why are you teaching that? Like, because, because you, because you coming against what they've been taught. Remember, they've been taught white Jesus, blue eyed Jesus, wavy haired Jesus. They've been taught the plantation religion. Mm -hmm. Forgive your enemy. Turn the other cheek. Do good unto thy masters. Sir, it's the same thing. That's why they think you crazy. You gonna hit the master? You gonna you ain't gonna turn the other cheek to master? They in their mind, when you say that, when you say you ain't forgiven, they actually hear you saying you ain't gonna forgive God. Because remember, if it's white, it's right. And you coming against it. Oh boy. We did a stream. That <laughs> you, I mean, you bringing up a stream that we, we, uh, uh, me and, uh, another, uh, creator named Cynthia G, uh, done called, we, we titled it Becky and, uh, how we titled it Becky and Brad is God to black people. And mm -hmm. basically just repeating the same thing and said, they're not even telling you to be worship them. You automatically doing that. And, 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 you know, we have to really make some moves, uh, for our children, uh, for our community or literally we going to go extinct. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's not a figure of speech. That's no. not, I hope people, I hope people really heard that word that you just used extinction because it's real, it's prevalent and it's not far off. It is not far off at all. So we, we got a very short window of time to get ourselves together to get ourselves whole and healthy and come together and start producing some strong black families. I mean, man, it was I was in my late twenties before I got myself together, man. I, I I was that guy, right? I was that guy. I, I I haven't always been educated. I haven't always had success. I haven't always had uh businesses. I haven't always had a healthy marriage like I have now. Man, I've been divorced several times, brother. I've been bankrupt several times i've I, I had children out of wedlock so i know i speak from both sides of the coin so a person don't have to attack me they don't have to jump on me because i'm not talking from a position of superiority i'm talking from a position of i've been on the negative side of it i was a contributor to broken homes i was a contributor to womanizing i was a contributor to being lackadaisical melancholic feeling like somebody owed me something that was me, but I changed. And if I can change, the next person can change. But you gotta wanna do it. We gotta participate in our own rescue. Ain't nobody gonna throw no lifelines. Ain't no life vest coming. Now we're gonna have to sew up the life vest. We're gonna have to stitch some stuff together. We're gonna have to lock arms and we're gonna have to dog paddle and we're gonna have the dead man float. We're gonna have to do whatever we gotta do. But if we don't do it together, it's not gonna happen. Amen to that. I, I agree with that hundred percent. If if our unity is the only thing that's gonna save us, I mean, I I was just reading last night message to the black man and the honorable Elijah Muhammad was talking about that how our unity is all we have, and it's, it's the truth. I mean, anytime we unify, that's when things go great for us. And it, right now, we so out of line is because we're not unified. Right, right. And you know, and again, and, and our people look for anything. Oh, uh, we, we don't care about the common denominators. We want to look for the differences. So just the fact that you just said, uh, Elijah Muhammad, you just lost some people. Because we talked about Jesus. We just lost some more people. Because I said Christianity. We just lost some more people. And we keep losing the message in the translation. So my message to everyone, I don't care if you worship Jesus, some young moon, Allah, Buddha, 
L. Rod Hubbard, you're assigned to, I don't care. If you African-American, if you got that melanin in your skin, I'm saying get rid of the differences. Put that to the side. Those are what I call negotiables. Man, it's negotiable if you go to church or not. It's negotiable if you take communion on first Sunday or fourth Sunday. It's negotiable if you celebrate Easter or not. That, 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 that's negotiable. The non-negotiables, our survival, our families, our children, our economic empowerment, those things we have to agree upon and agree upon now and stand strong on, period. Um, you know, family, unity, understanding that we do need to speak to someone about our mental health issues, especially living in this country. And we don't need to be so taboo and saying, oh, that's what, that's what white folks do and uh, all the other things, right? I mean, we do really if, if, to talk to somebody because it's hard being a black person in America. And, and, and that's why some of us are just trying to do anything to escape it. You know, maybe right. materialism, maybe it's sex, right. maybe it's drugs, you know, alcohol, because it's just hard. It, it's hard on our mind. It, it's, you know, our heart, you know, it suffer because of racism. I mean, yes, so, sir. you know, we definitely need to reach out to brothers and sisters. Now, Dr. Jerry, could anyone possibly reach out to you for help and treatment? Absolutely. Uh, now, I'm not currently practicing, but my wife and I do uh, life coaching, right? We do uh, relationship coaching. And so what the, the difference between that and uh, us actually practicing is the life coaching is, is, is solution-focused, brief therapies. And the key word there, brief, right? Because mm -hmm. when you start trying to get all into deep things, kind of like what we touched into, man, you could be talking about tens of hundreds of hours, right, delving into that. And it does need to be delved into at some point in time. But right now, we believe the clock is ticking, right? We believe the clock is really, really ticking. So we want to kind of address some core things. We want to address them quickly and immediately. And so a person, they can visit our website, man, docandwinter.com. Uh, if, if they got cell phones, which I know they do, uh, they can uh, literally just uh, text the word uh, DOC, D-O-C, uh, to 71441. I'm also on social media. Uh, you know, I answer all inboxes. I return all text messages. We read all emails. And uh, we just ask that people uh, reach out uh, in an open mind and be ready to take some action, right? We, we ain't got to kick the tires. We, we know it's a problem. We ain't got to, you will, know, man, what? You know, don't inbox me talking about, well, are you a Christian or a Muslim? That's irrelevant. I'm a helper. <laughs> I'm wealthy. I've been on both sides of the coin. I'm, I'm able to lead and guide and, and help. That That's the key thing right there. Watching your show, right? Even if a person don't agree with what you're saying, their mind has been expanded. And that's the key. If we can just get our people to get their head out of the sand, to hear some different things, to see some different things, one plant, another waters, God gives the increase. And if we just keep that cycle going, man, I think everything will be okay. But we got to speed it up and we all got to start moving as expeditiously as earthly possible, sir. You're right. And with all that said, ladies and gentlemen, make sure we'll try to put everything in the pinned comment so you can go to uh, the website uh, and you can text as he gave the information there. Uh, but talk to him, him and his wife, if you need some help. There's no shame in that. It's not None. a taboo. We deal with too much in this country with white supremacist terrorism not to need to talk to somebody sometime. Okay. So don't feel no shame in that. There's no shame at all. Let's say, because it's not your fault what you deal with, but you have to, you know, adapt and get some strength and build yourself up. So Dr. Jerry, we want to thank you for joining us today on the show. Um, we really had a great conversation. I hope a lot of people could take a lot of good things away from that. Yes, sir, my brother. I just want to end it by saying, listen, if you were born into a certain condition, that was by force. But if you die in that same condition, that's by choice. And we're just asking you to choose better.